Hello, I'm Tabitha Mothani and welcome to On the Farms of Africa. This is a show that brings you various tech farming methods, trending and emerging agribusinesses in Africa. This week, we explore the fungi world and mushrooms are the topic of the day. Later, we talk to Rosas Othiambu, an inspiring founder of Mushroom Kenya. Fungi culture is the process of producing food, medicine and other products by the cultivation of mushrooms and other fungi. Mushroom Kenya has partnered with various farmers in the country to inspire mushroom farming. Let's have a look at their story. Mushrooms are the edible fleshy fruiting bodies of certain fungi which may be gathered wild or grown under cultivation. With a variety of species available, cultivated mushrooms are usually grown in the dark in climate controlled drones. At this farm we grow two types. We grow the oyster which looks like little plates and we also grow these bottom mushrooms here. Mushrooms, they are edible and they are non-edible. Most edible mushrooms grow in areas where there is high phosphorus and high nitrogen. Uh, inedible ones thrive where there is sulfur. The trouble is they look almost similar. In Kenya, people consume the yellow oyster, the white oyster, the pink oyster. They also consume the African boletus. It's a type of mushroom found in the forest and they also consume this button mushroom. This is the Agaricus bisphorus uh, subspecies of, of mushrooms. Uh, those are the ones which are edible and that are commercially viable to grow. Joseph Morethi, a farmer and partner with Mushroom Kenya based in Ngong, has been long into this practice, acquiring vast knowledge from training and experience. I've practiced mushroom farming uh, from the year 2004. There's a small seven year break because of lack of water. Um, and one and a half years ago, I, I resumed growing mushrooms. We get our, our water from, from collecting rainwater. Um, we've collected from these gutters and we also get our water from the city council. Mushrooms take about two and a half months to mature with a number of factors put into play. From the day of planting to the day of maturity, they take between 40 and 50 days. Uh, that depends on the nutrients again in the soil, so it's usually between 40 and 50 days. A growing medium for mushroom production, which is called substrate, is prepared from various forms. This is the substrate, it's wheat straw, which has been added some fertilizers and some organic elements. And this is mainly what the mushrooms will use when they're growing. So we prepare this for a period of two weeks. Um, and after we prepare it for a period of two weeks, it's able to break down. And what we're doing today is we're turning over to allow for decomposition of the wheat straw. And that decomposition allows the mushroom uh, to spread its roots so that it's able to get the nutrients it needs to grow. With me here is Ken, we work together. And um, what we're doing right now is that we are turning the grass. This is to allow air to enter inside the, the growing medium. It's called substrate. And this growing medium is what the mushroom uses and the air that is allowed inside um, allows all the fertilizer and all the other elements to mix properly and be aerated and oxygenated. You notice it has a white substance on top of it um, and it is steaming. That means it is breaking down uh, the biological matter to create the food that is required for the mushrooms. This is wheat straw that was gotten from harvested wheat. The straw that remains is called wheat straw and it's packed in bales. The first stage is opening up those bales and watering them. After watering them, you wait for three days and then you add manure, horse manure, um, ostrich manure, if you have ostrich manure, organic manure or chicken manure. Then you turn it the way I'm turning right now. And when you turn it, you continue watering for another three to four days. After you turn it, you wait another three days and that makes more than one and a half weeks of waiting. After that, you get to the stage where you add fertilizer. We're talking about urea, 
we're talking about um, calcium ammonium nitrate we're talking about monophosphates and um, and micro effective microorganisms emi these elements are the primary food sources and they're added on to the substrate to increase the nutritive value for the mushrooms because this is an, an environment which is man-made they're not being grown naturally and um, so you have to give them everything that they get in their natural environment for them to grow after that you wait another week so that the grass continues to decompose and you keep turning it after every three days until you arrive at a stage where you need to put what we call lime now the white coloring that you see here um, for this particular grass it has been added lime and right now as it stands here it is now two weeks old and two days and after we add lime we wait for another three days and then we turn after turning we look at and measure whether it still has steam this steam means it still has ammonia which means it's still breaking down you cannot plant it right now you cannot put the seed of the mushrooms in this grass as it presently is because the ammonia will kill it so you wait another week and you keep turning after every three days so that this entire decomposition process can be complete. That makes almost three and a half weeks of preparing and decomposing this compost. It's called substrate, but it's also called compost. Between three and a half weeks and four weeks, it is now ready for planting. This particular type of plastic bags, they keep in the moisture because if you put it in any other medium, it dries out and mushrooms never do well in a place which is dried out. So to handle the moisture, you put them in these plastic bags. These are packaging industrial grade bags and they are for planting medium, much the same way as trees in a nursery and flowers in a nursery are put in their plastic bags. So these are the plastic bags that are used for planting uh, the button mushrooms. It is standard pra uh, industrial practice and it is one of the best in maintaining the moisture to keep this substrate from drying out. When this structure has, bro has broken down enough after between three and a half and four, four weeks, you place an average of, of almost four kilograms into this plastic bag. Make sure it is dry. I mean, it is cold. Uh, it's not too warm. And this is how it has already been, been put in a plastic bag. Now, when it is here, at this stage here, it shall be put the spawn, which is the seed. And once it has been planted, that seed, it shall stay open like this in a house where it will be growing um, for two weeks. After the substrate has been prepared, planting takes place inside the house which can be of various materials, but Joseph prefers the mud house. This structure is where we put the substrate which has already been planted in bags and it's made out of mud. The structure can be made out of stone, iron sheets, um, bricks, other building material. Its purpose is to prevent the substrate from being contaminated as it grows, protecting it from the elements, um, temperature fluctuations. In this particular location, we chose to build soil or earthen houses because of temperature modulation. Uh, Butter mushrooms require temperature to be modulated. It needs to be very even at an optimum of between 17 and 20 degrees centigrade uh, and not fluctuating at all. So at night when it's very cold outside below 11 degrees, it's still warm inside. During the day when temperatures go to almost 30 degrees, it's still 20 degrees. The temperature fluctuation is at a minimal. So earthen houses are the best. And the primary purpose of putting them in earthen houses and the reason is because mushrooms grow in the soil. It's only the best option for them to be put in a similar environment. Inside, the light is minimal. This is because mushrooms grow well under dark conditions. This is the inside of the house. Uh, as you can see, it is relatively dark. It has regulated temperatures. And these are this is a substrate which has already been planted for a week now. When it's brought into the house from the field, it's supposed to stay another three weeks. 
and five days. But between those three weeks and five days, for the first two weeks, it is in this stage where it has already been planted the seed. So this is the seed, as you can see. It is made from, from wheat or barley or oats. And this has been pre-spawned with the mushroom mycelia. And it is allowed to grow on this uh, seed. There's a lot of it. And when it is being planted, it is planted in this form. And that's why it's put into this substrate. The seeds are measured in liters. A package of, of, uh, of literage or seed corresponds to the amount of mycelium that has been used to grow that seed. So if you see a package of 10 liters, it means it is 10 liters in volume, uh, but that has been encased in, uh, in, the, in the grain which, which, with which the seed covers itself in. Um, its cost is in a between 9,000 and 12,000 Kenya shillings for 15 liters. Uh, it comes in packages of 15 liters and 30 liters. Uh, and that is enough for 100 bales of wheat straw or barley straw, 90 kilograms of uh, sugar cane bagasse and all other organic matter that is useful for mushrooms. Um, once you've planted that spawn, because spawn is mycelium, that is the seed of the mushroom, which has been en uh, which has encased uh, grain. Uh, it's called spawn. We get our seeds uh, from South Africa, from Germany, um, from the US, and from local universities. You can get them locally. Capacity. The people who are growing mushrooms are more than the capacity being produced um, locally to meet the the demand for this uh, spawn. It's called spawn. You have to go and get it from outside. At the time that you go locally and you're told this, this, this is not enough. Um, but all the seed is the same. It's mainly put in uh, spawned on barley or oats or rice grain. That is because initially these grains have all the nutrients for the spawn to grow, which is similar to the nutrients found in the substrate that we prepared. That's why they're they they the very best. On the day of planting, you mix it evenly with your substrate. Once you mix it evenly uh, uh, along this bag, then you're able to spread it out on the bag and you let it remain in the bag for two weeks. We had said before that it's supposed to be here for three weeks and five days to three weeks to four weeks. But for the first two weeks, you allow it to stay this way uh, so that it starts spreading and developing root systems in the substrate. That is how now you start growing the, the mushroom itself. After those two weeks, it shall require to be put a layer of soil on top. Okay, that, is, that, 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 that means it shall be put what you call a casing layer. Casing is using organic soil or soil that you've prepared that has as few microbes as possible. By microbes, we mean other life forms that will compete with the growing mycelium for the mushrooms that will overtake or destroy the mushrooms. So you have to sterilize the soil, uh, you have to pasteurize it to kill off microorganisms, uh, bacterial diseases, um, other microbes that are within the soil, and other competing species of mushrooms. Because you want your mushrooms to grow uh, healthily, so they have to have as little competition as possible. So this is casing soil with as little iron content as possible. Why iron content? The iron content has to be little because that iron binds to the oxygen and to nitrogen and sulfur, which are key elements for the growing of mushrooms. So when that iron binds to them, it forms iron oxides and these oxides affect the growth of those mushrooms. So they do not grow very well. So red soils, which are really red, are not appropriate for casing, you need soils which have less iron and more organic matter. So this is black soil. It has been pasteurized for 90 minutes at a temperature of 90 degrees and above. And once you pasteurize it or you dry bake it at 90 degrees for 30 minutes, that kills off all the microorganisms. Then you let it cool down. Once it has cooled down, you remove all grasses and all other biological matter that is not related to the soil and now it is ready for casing. Once it has cooled, then you bring it to your bag, which you've opened up, which has been in the house for those two weeks, 14 days. And as you can see, I'm now laying it on 
to this substrate which already has uh, mycelium drain, drain in it. So I spread it in such a way that it forms an even layer. On the substrate, it has already reached it, its final stage. It shall now be covered carefully. The reason for covering is to stop the soil from being contaminated by microbes in the air. And once it has been covered like this, it will also retain the moisture within the bag and the soil. And this allows the mycelium, which has started spreading here, to form the fruiting bodies. Those are the mushroom pinheads. They form at this soil surface level because the substrate is where the roots are. And um, this, soil, uh, this casing soil gives that root structure holding ground to start forming pins. Another reason is that the nutrients that are found in the soil, especially trace elements like, sil uh, like, like a little bit of silicon, boron, nickel, uh, cadmium, and, and, and uh, magnesium. These trace elements are what the fruiting body of the mushroom, the, the root structure, uses to build pinheads or the fruit section of the, of the mushroom. So it shall remain like this for another 10 days to 14 days. That forms the complete growing cycle of three and a half weeks to four weeks. And after three and a half weeks to four weeks, you shall start noticing the bulb forming small white pinheads. And after it forms, it is unfolded like this once more. You'll wait for one or two days where you shall start seeing pinheads. Harvesting takes place after the 50 days and proper packaging is done. What you've seen is the final product of the pins that we had described earlier and which you already saw, having developed and turned into a fruit. This is the final part of the process of growing these mushrooms. This is the fruit which developed from the casing layer, the soil which we had put on earlier. It forms this way because it's about to start developing um, the seed section. Underneath over here you can see uh, when it starts growing old, this will open up. And once it opens up, it forms uh, gills which produce the seed. So inside here there is the seed uh, for the mushrooms. So this one has been harvested and when we harvest, we usually use a brush to brush up the soil. We remove the part which has soil and set it aside. And this is the part that has been packed onto this. As you can see, the shape of this is buttons. That's why it's called the button mushrooms. Mushrooms are best packaged inside a plastic container. It's called a panet, and they're covered with a poly polythene sheeting, uh, food grade, and it is to conserve the moisture. They should be packaged in this way. Uh, as perishables, it extends the shelf life, but also maintains the moisture and the texture of the crop while you take it to the market. This wind scale is used to measure packaging. The packaging is usually 250 grams. So when you place it here, you'll find that it has reached to 250 grams here. But it goes beyond by 7 or 8 grams uh, to cater to account for the weight of the, of the panet. So this is a scale, a standard uh, commercial scale and it's best used for this uh, packaging. They can also be packaged in 500 grams or one kilogram. Uh, but you do not go beyond that because you tend to crush the, the delicate uh, button structure of that mushroom. So 250 grams is best uh, as a package. A panel's basic price is from 150 shillings to 250 shillings, depending on the market uh, fluidity on that day. That is the demand uh, and supply constraints. So it's between 150 shillings and 250 shillings. Besides the inevitable challenges, Moredi has highly benefited from the mushroom farming business with an available market for his produce. We sell locally to people who love eating mushrooms, individuals. We also have hotels and eateries around Nairobi um, which consume these kind of mushrooms. One of the biggest challenges is contamination by flies and by competing uh, mushrooms. We have poisonous mushrooms which grow to get, which use the same foodstuffs that these mushrooms grow. So we have to create uh, organic control mechanisms to deal with the competing mushrooms. That way, this mushroom is able to grow. Another challenge is uh, bacteria. And the other one, of course, is the issue of temperature. Mushrooms are agilophytes. That is to say, they love cool, dark temperatures. So maintaining low light conditions and maintaining uh, hygiene 
um, helps alleviate some of the challenges of growing these mushrooms here. The structure has been built in such a way the, the bottom area is recessed. That helps maintain the temperature of the growing area, especially the floor. The floor should always be cool. It should always be moist or damp. And the structure, like made of soil, uh, regulates the temperatures, keep reducing temperature fluctuations and oscillations to keep them at a, a premium between 15 and 17 degrees centigrade. I've benefited from learning how to grow, especially the traditional oyster mushroom, that is the yellow oyster and the pink oyster. Um, learning how to develop its spawn. And I've also learned about the market forces. And of course, when you sell, you're able to sustain your family and uh, pay school fees and just pay bills, basically. This is Kuno mushrooms. We are also into the business of researching about growing commercially traditional indigenous African mushrooms which have been forgotten. These species of mushrooms that we're growing here come from other countries, but we also want to research on growing our own African traditional mushrooms. Um, this is their homeland and we hope to be able to research and collaborate with um, our land institutions, universities and other groups in other forums. So anybody who's interested in learning about growing traditional mushrooms, we are doing research on them currently and uh, we want to pray that we shall be able to have a good outcome from that research. Person who wants to venture into mushroom farming should not fear there is a market. There is training if they do not know and it's not a difficult process. It is farming like any other crop. Uh, it has its challenges and it has its, uh, its advantages. And every challenge that you find growing mushrooms um, has already people who are dealing with that challenge. So they, we have support groups. Uh, one of them is um, Mushrooms uh, Kenya on Facebook. This is the Mushroom uh, Growers Association of Kenya. Um, these are forums of people who are growing mushrooms and they provide invaluable support, um, advice, growing um, uh, methods, challenges, uh, even with marketing. So there's a support structure around the mushroom growing community that will be able to support anybody coming up with the idea of wanting to venture into mushroom growing. With an array of hope in him for a highly rewarding business in future, mushroom farming is a field that well tapped into could be a money-making investment in the nation and Africa as a whole. Next, we talk to Rusos Opiambo, a student and founder of Mushroom Kenya. But first, here is a look at his profile. Rusos Damis Othiambo is an IT student at Mount Kenya University, an upcoming motivational speaker in personal development and humanity, and also an entrepreneur. He has a strong passion for farming and a role model to the youth in society, which has seen him put up Mushroom Kenya, an organization that trains and mentors farmers in the country, and which is also part of a bigger farm plan for agritourism aimed at producing mushrooms and helping other farmers thrive in the venture. His passion to transform the society by giving hope has seen him start Volunteers for the Elderly in Need, also known as VEIN, an organization that helps the elderly in need, formulating programs geared towards addressing different challenges that the elderly face. Russos is a fun-loving person who is passionate about traveling and waiting. Russos Othiamba, nice to have you on the show tonight. Thank you. So you are a student and at the same time working with Mushroom Kenya as the founder. How do you balance all of this? Well, it's not really been easy balancing schoolwork and, uh, and uh, business, that is entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the first thing I had to do was to defer my studies so that mm -hmm. I don't attend classes on a physical uh, uh, basis. Yeah. So what I do is uh, virtual learning whereby you mm -hmm. don't really need to go to class. To mm -hmm. uh, So I do it online. So mm -hmm. that gives me time to go to the office mm -hmm. in the morning do my business uh, uh, activities yeah. and then uh, I do classes at uh, a stipulated time that I've mm -hmm. set for studies. All right yes. and uh, when was Mushroom Kenya founded and what was its sole purpose? 
Well, Mushroom Kenya was founded in 2015, mm -hmm. and this is an idea that I got while working with uh, another organization that deal with agricultural research. Mm -hmm. So we did some field work, and what this uh, organization does is they deal with the farmers, and then the the records from the farmers are normally brought to uh, the headquarters in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So I would really help in feeding the data, doing some reports, yeah. and that is when I used to get to know so many kinds of farming that what farmers are really dealing with. Mm -hmm. Some are doing red worm, some are doing mushrooms, some are mm -hmm. doing other things that are not really common. Mm -hmm. So that is when I now got interested in mushroom farming. Mm -hmm. I did some little research about it, yeah. uh, a trial, mm -hmm. and then now I said this is a good business to start. Mm -hmm. So that is how it came about. Great. And uh, what did you need to start up this business? Uh, well, to start up this business first I needed information mm -hmm. because I needed to know like what is required where can I get them, mm -hmm. and of course capital is there, yes. and you also know which mm -hmm. market will you be supplying and what exactly. is the market information yeah. that is outside there. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so far, what, uh, what experience have you garnered over the years since 2015, and um, how has the experience been like, and how have you yourself benefited? Ah, well, I've really gathered a lot of uh, experiences, both good and bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every business has the good side and the bad side. Yeah. But I would say in general it has been a, a good experience for me because first mm -hmm. uh, I've been able to you know, get, be getting some income for upkeep, school fees mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Yeah. And then the second thing is I've also come mm -hmm. to have a network of uh, people who share the same dream. Mm -hmm. I would say, let's say, farmers, and mm -hmm. uh, the network keeps on growing. So that's also a good experience that yeah. I've been, I've been getting with this kind of uh, work that I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and then maybe on the bad side of uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. of this, you know, sometimes challenges are also part of this. Yeah. So some of the challenges we've been receiving is uh, maybe in now in terms of uh, maybe production. Sometimes you find you get challenges at the farm, let's say pests and diseases. Yeah. Uh, sometimes the market you cannot. Uh, sometimes it's you cannot supply uh, with the market because you get a lot of inquiries than you can supply. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a challenge. And at some point I also lost a farm, so it's also been a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so far, what's your reach within the country? Ah, well, I would say now I operate in so many areas in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, from Nairobi being the stronghold, uh, mm -hmm. Nakuru uh, yeah. is another part. Mm -hmm. uh, Mombasa, I was mm -hmm. just there the last week, just yeah. trying to work out something in this line. Mm -hmm. And so we are working with farmers across the country. Although yeah. some areas you will realize uh, the farmers are not even there. How have you interacted with the farmers? What have you taught them? Our interaction with the farmers is based on a mentorship program because what we believe is if you come to the farm and learn about mushroom production, let's say the training, yeah. for one day or two days, mm -hmm. that is not really enough because mm -hmm. let's say if you find that we are harvesting today mm -hmm. or for the two days you will be in the farm, yeah. we will tell you that it started like this, mm -hmm. came to this stage and now we are here. Yeah. So the other two stages are like, you know, they are still theory. Yeah. What you are seeing is how to harvest. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes these things are also easier said than done. We mm -hmm. tell you, we do this, we do this, and it feels very easy. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the farm, yeah. you realize that it's not that easy mm -hmm. uh, as, you know, in conversation. So yeah. that is why it is good to have a mentor, mm -hmm. somebody who has done this, mm -hmm who will guide you from day one, let's yeah. say giving you a quote, uh -huh. and uh, then they guide you all the way to maybe your first production cycle. Your training goes for, okay, since day one up to when the mushrooms mature, how do you go about that? So majorly what has been happening, yeah. uh, we've been doing a day training at the farm. You mm -hmm. come in the morning and leave in the evening. So mm -hmm. in the process, we, we go through the whole production process. Mm -hmm. But uh, we realize that is not really enough. So yeah. what we do is we connect with other farmers in, other, in so many areas, majorly mm -hmm. around Kenya. And so once we have a database of 
mushroom farmers mm. and people are also inquiring so there are new farmers who mm -hmm. want new people want to join the farming yeah. and there are those who are doing the farming mm -hmm. so what we do is if these people once these people have been trained we link them to mentors so the mentors mm -hmm. should be the farmers in their areas and if not in their area mm -hmm. in the surroundings okay. so these are mm -hmm. the people who will now be taking them through the whole the production whole cycle Okay, that yeah. is great. Okay, you have the mentors coaching the farmers. Yes, the mentees. Yes. How do you benefit financially from all of this? Ah uh, well, uh, okay. this is a project that uh, has undergone a lot of piloting. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, the first time we were making it free, mm -hmm. then you realize if you connect a new farmer, a mentee in this case, to mm -hmm. a mentor. Mm -hmm. Maybe the mentor makes a lot of excuses, and, you know, I'm at work, I can't find time. Yeah. So what to, and then we made some adjustment, like now, you know, the mentee pay some uh, premium subscription yeah. that uh, there are different packages. There's a package that will just offer you maybe yeah. one visit every two weeks or one visit every week. There's a package that will offer you like maybe close to yeah. daily visit. So you choose what is flexible for you. Mm -hmm. So this is what we also share with the, the mentor. Mm -hmm. So the mentor feel motivated that I in helping this person, mm -hmm. I will be spending my time, but I'll also be earning something. Mm -hmm. So in turn, they become more uh, committed to helping the mentees. Mm -hmm. And the mentee is also getting good services. So mm -hmm. that is how we, we really benefit from that. Okay, yes. uh, besides the training, uh, what do I need to start mushroom farming? Ah, well, to get started in mushroom farming uh, mm -hmm. training, of course, information is the first thing you, yeah. you look at. Mm -hmm. You really need to know, like, uh, how will you go about it. Mm -hmm. And then once you have the training, mm -hmm. mushroom is uh, it's a plant and a fungi uh, uh, kingdom. Yeah. But uh, they behave so funny. Mm -hmm. They don't really behave like plants in that... Yeah. Uh, for example, one, they don't need mm -hmm. sunlight to make their own food. Yeah. So that means they can be grown in a house. Mm -hmm. So once you have the training, you look for now the requirements you need to get started in mushroom production. So one is a house. Yeah. There's a reason we are using a house. One is because it doesn't use sunlight, so that is one reason it can be in a house. Mm -hmm. Two, it will be easy to regulate the conditions that it requires inside the house. Like it requires low humidity, mm -hmm. darkness at some point, mm -hmm. hygiene. So all these things are very easy to maintain in a house. Yeah. So apart from training, you need a house. And okay. once you have a house, mushroom, since it doesn't use sunlight to make its own food, mm -hmm. so where will it get the food? Mm -hmm. it will get it from a soil, a special soil for this case. Mm -hmm. So in our own terms, we normally say, call the soil substrate. Yeah. So based on different types of mushrooms, they have mm -hmm. different types of substrate. Yeah. In Kenya, we have two major mushrooms uh, that are consumed or mm -hmm. grown, button and oyster. Yeah. So for oyster, you use, uh, uh, the substrate are also many, mm -hmm. but uh, one of the best is like wheat straw, Rice, uh, rice straw, yeah. sugarcane bags, coffee hearts, those ones are the ones that are really recommended because of high nitrogen content. Mm -hmm. And the substrate should also have some qualities uh, to be used. Yeah. So, for example, for Easter, you need to get this, the straws. If it is wheat straw, rice straw, coffee hearts, then you, you just sterilize and plant. But for button, it has to be decomposed whereby some other things are added so that the mushroom get all the nutrients from from the substrate mm -hmm. so apart from uh, training house you get a substrate then you look for the seeds in our own terms we say spawns Spawn. yeah. yes mm -hmm. and then once you have the seeds mm -hmm. uh, you look for the market mm -hmm. because you will have a house you'll have the sub uh, the, the soil you will have planted mm -hmm. now you need market once you harvest yeah. All right, and so far, what markets do you have, or rather, what available markets are there for mushroom farmers? Well, there is a, it's a broad thing. There, there is so many target groups for that really consume mushrooms, so mm -hmm. they become the, the target market or yeah. uh, fish ponds. In this case, yes. we normally say you have to know where you you yeah. get the people you want. So. Mm -hmm. 
The major group is the, the restaurants mm -hmm. and you really need to know which kind of restaurants are these because not all restaurants will be taking mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, maybe the Japanese, the Chinese, mm -hmm. uh, Italians, uh, Mexican, mm -hmm. those are some of the major, major target uh, restaurants. Okay. So apart from restaurants, we have groceries, mm -hmm. uh, especially in Nairobi, there are so many. Okay. Yeah, these groceries stock these things. And then three is uh, we have farmer markets, especially mm -hmm. the organic farmer markets. Mm -hmm. So these farmer markets, they normally try to uh, bring organic products into one place. So that is one place that you can also tap mm -hmm. and uh, sell the mushroom. Mm -hmm. For example, if you are in Nairobi, there is an organic market in Marula and Karen. They have uh, also days they showcase in two rivers. So those are some areas you can also sell. Apart from groceries or farmer markets, you will also have um, people who are fully organic vegetarians in this yeah. case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the vegetarians will really consume this. Mm -hmm. And uh, another target is the old people and the children. Yeah. They, they will always be recommended, you know, you have to take this, maybe mm -hmm. at the clinic or something like that. And also hospitals? Yeah, hospitals not mm -hmm. that much because mm -hmm. mostly what they do is they recommend the clients, maybe they oh. give you a, a diet or something, mm -hmm. you, you need to take a lot of proteins, you know, mm -hmm. so they give recommendations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they also buy. Mm -hmm. Yes. You mentioned land as a challenge and also the market. What other challenges have you faced? Uh, for myself as an individual, the first yeah. first challenge was, uh, I would say, information. It was really hard to get the information, so okay. that was the first challenge. Yeah. But uh, I did a lot of research and, you know, got some information. Mm -hmm. The second challenge was capital. Definitely. Yes, yes, yes. In, in starting this, maybe you might even have a space, a small space where you mm -hmm. want to get started. You know, you are not starting big. Yeah. But now you don't even have you know, the capital to transform the whole idea. So capital has also been a challenge. Mm -hmm. And then um, I got some capital, got some land and uh, started off. Mm -hmm. And then the unfortunate happened, the, the farm was flattened. So back to ground zero again. So, but now mm -hmm. I'm working on building it again. The, mm -hmm. the, the reviving the farm is on mm -hmm. in process yes okay how much did you start with and where did you get the money from well i didn't start with much mm -hmm. uh, you know most times people say you have to have like you know a lot of money to get started in this mm -hmm. for me i didn't have that kind of money because mm -hmm. i'm in school at the same time yeah and uh, you can imagine the life of a student you have to balance a lot of things yeah so for me i the total cost for my startup costed forty thousand. Mm -hmm. So that was everything, the house, the seeds, some training, you know, all that. Yeah. So 40,000. 40,000. Wow. And uh, in this case, I started with what was easy to start, that mm -hmm. is oyster. Yeah, no more mm -hmm. expenses like other types of mushrooms. Yeah, so and, that is mm -hmm. what I started with. Okay, and did you borrow this money or where did you get it from? Ah, well, I didn't borrow this money. Mm -hmm. I worked for this money. Wow. So um, mm -hmm. I would really give a lot of credit to the, the agricultural NGO that I have been working with. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called CABI, Center for Agricultural and Biosciences International. So mm -hmm. we would go to the field, do some work, and I would save some money. And mm -hmm. uh, wow. you know, that is what mm -hmm. now I saved and used mm -hmm. to start the project. All right, great. And uh, what growth opportunities do we see for you and also for Mushroom Kenya? Well, I see there are so many opportunities uh, for growth, especially mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so much good plans of, uh, you know, progress. Yes. Like one is, uh, in my view, because now I'm now the, the dream carrier. I'm the one who, mm -hmm. like, you know, I can see in you five years. Vision. Yes, the yeah. vision. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of work that is yet to be done. According to me, maybe it's 20% mm -hmm. that has been done. Uh, I'm planning to have uh, like uh, roll uh, more other services than we have now, mm -hmm. like uh, you know roll the mentorship program to be a nationwide thing. Now it's been uh, 
are operating around Nairobi because that is where it's also easy to foresee what these people are doing. Yeah. So that is one thing that can also spread to other parts of the country. Yeah. And then two, we've also realized that new mushroom farmers who are, mm. are coming into the industry, mm. they face a lot of challenges of like getting land, especially in Nairobi. Mm. Uh, if you are to get uh, getting a house to do this is close to impossible because nobody will allow you to do farming in their house. Mm. And two, getting a space, let's say a yard where you can be doing this thing is very expensive. You'll be mm. told, even if you get, let's say, 10,000 per month, mm. but these people tell you you have to pay for the whole year or mm -hmm. two years so that it becomes expensive. Mm -hmm. So but that has been a challenge of most farmers. So what we will do in the future is uh, we maybe have some land even if it's rented in yeah. and we build these mushroom houses uh -huh. and then we rent it to the interested parties uh, yeah. in production cycle so yeah. if the production cycle is three months uh -huh. we give it to you for three months just the same way the the rental houses we live uh -huh. in are, are done and okay. so that is another program that maybe in future will come Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, value addition of mushroom has also not been exhausted. What yeah. is done now is only the drying, mm -hmm. of which very few people are drying now. Mm -hmm. So we will also work on value addition, value addition. Uh, procedures from mm -hmm. drying to maybe processing, packaging, mm -hmm. that will come with time. Mm -hmm. And maybe also having a research center just mm. based on this because there wow. are so many types of mushrooms yeah. that uh, people we don't know that about so mm -hmm. we need to know more about those, those ones right. so it will be like a one-stop farm for mushroom mm -hmm. things <laughs> great yes. and uh, what advice would you give to anyone who wants to venture into mushroom farming okay Anyone who wants to venture into mushroom should take into consideration one, getting mm -hmm. the information. Mm -hmm. That is very, very key. Yeah. Two, once you get all this information, uh, it's also good to, now when you're getting the, the requirements you need to get started, you mm -hmm. need to go for quality. Yeah. For example, you realize somebody harvests for two months mm -hmm. and another one harvests for one month. It's mm -hmm. because of the, maybe the quality, the of, quality the of the seeds or things mm -hmm. like that. And then you should also look for market in good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're not saying there's no market. There's plenty of market for mm -hmm. this case. But mushroom is something that is perishable. Very and fast. Uh, Yes. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a lot of pressure because you mm -hmm. will start harvesting today. Mm -hmm. You harvest tomorrow, mm -hmm. the day after tomorrow, for one month or two months. So mm -hmm. if you don't get rid of these ones, then where will you take the other one? So it also gives you some pressure. Yeah. So you really need to work on this market before because sometimes you go to the restaurant, they tell you bring a sample, they communicate mm -hmm. after two weeks. So you're wondering if you already started harvesting. Mm -hmm. Where will you take these two weeks produce? Mm -hmm. So you work on marketing good time. Yeah. And uh, what do you feel the government can do to help our youth in business? Well, I think uh, when it comes to government support, I'm mm -hmm. a youth and I also mm -hmm. felt it while, while starting off, it's not easy. If you don't really share the, uh, the passion, mm -hmm. you can give up at some point. One is uh, they can help the youth, uh, um, you know, they change their perception in agriculture because most youth mm -hmm. feel that um, agriculture is for failures. You know? Somebody has gone to school, they feel like they should be working in an office, so there should be some sensitization about that. Yeah. And when it comes to, let's say now mushroom farming, they can support with the finances, that is also a, a very big challenge for, for many youths. Mm -hmm. And maybe also help cultivate the, the export market, whereby, mm -hmm. you know, if you are a youth, you can harvest this, maybe take somewhere and then mm -hmm. they can collect the ma they cultivate the market. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Arusa Sapiando. Nice to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all you had prepared for you today. But tune in again next week and you get to explore more areas in the agribusiness sector. From me, Tabitha Motoni and the entire on the farms of Africa team, have a lovely week.